last year at the uh, at the conference, I, it seemed like every other person I talked to was saying, I don't have any material to teach with. Do you have anything you can lend me? So that gave me the idea for uh, this year's conference to uh, take the stuff that I've developed and then publish that if anyone wants to use it. Uh, like JR said, uh, my, my degrees are in electrical engineering. I spent most of my time as a uh, network engineer and inf information security officer. Uh, excuse me, cat problem. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I spent my, most of my time at Blue Ridge helping to design their uh, computer network and then defend it uh, against attacks by auditors. And we did this by generating huge amounts of paperwork. Uh, I think some of the folks here have experienced that. Uh, I was lucky in that I had uh, <clears throat> bosses that let me spend some of my time trying to do real security. So I would take classes from SANS and then come home and practice uh, threat hunting and looking at logs and things like that. Uh, if you want to contact me, my probably the quickest way is the Twitter link at the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> I check email, but sometimes it may go a day or so without me uh, checking it out. So questions so far? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way the course started, back in 2012, there was all kinds of uh, stuff on the InfoSec sites saying, we need people, we got to have people, recruit people into ITSEC. So uh, SANS had started a program called CyberCore, and I sent emails to all the uh, high school principals around saying, hey, I'm available to do this, with, you know, uh, do you want it? And uh, Leanne Weitzel, the director at SVGS, uh, contacted me and said, sure, let's have a, have a one night a week club. And that must have gone well because the next fall she said, okay, I want you to teach that as a class. Um, <clears throat> they start early at 745. So I was able to uh, teach first period at SVGS and then go on to work. Uh, and she fortunately had the rest resources to have a teacher in the room with me all the time and supervise and all that good stuff. Uh, but once, the, once I got into the class, it was kind of, oh my God, what have I done? Because I wanted everything to be as hands-on as possible. Because that's, that's what we really need in IT. I'll get into that later. Uh, but I, there were no books that did much more than vocabulary lessons. Uh, <clears throat> So about that time, Cyber Core turned into Cyber Aces, and I decided to use that and expand it with my own labs. Uh, the Cyber Aces, I'll give you links here. The Cyber Aces site is, is here. The main thing you want is this tutorials here. And when you click on that, these are all the lessons. So they have one long module on Linux and Windows operating systems, one on networking, and then systems administration, which is basically script in uh, Bash, PowerShell, and Python. Uh, all of these have uh, uh, This is our very first module, our very first session. YouTube um, presentations that are uh, presented by a guy named Tim Medin, who is, uh, well, he's not quite a rock star in InfoSec, but he's pretty close. He's, uh, uh, he does lots of teaching. He's developed uh, attacks against Windows Kerberos, big famous guy. So, so these are good. I found my kids get bored with videos. Uh, and so you can go here and download the handout, the slides he's using. 
and those are really good. So what I did was create, build modules around them uh, with my own labs. All my stuff is published on GitHub and you can download that. Uh, this link here will take you to my things. Uh, let's see. Oops. Where's my... I had this preloaded, but not. Um, <clears throat> so I have CyberSec modules, uh, Linux networking, scripting, and then one I added on my own was crypto. SSH Cloud is the beginnings of moving my stuff from a regular lab into the cloud. That's still in work. Uh, anyway, if you're free, if you're familiar with GitHub. Uh, from GitHub command prompt, you can just say git clone and this URL and it'll download the whole thing. Or you can download all the modules as a zip file. Um, oops. So, uh, I'll spend a little time on my soapbox. Uh, Hands-on is just totally essential if you're trying to teach people to go out and work in IT. Because IT people do not memorize lists or uh, you know, select the most appropriate from these four choices. They have to build stuff and protect stuff and fix it. So it's all real world hands-on work. Uh, of my employees, the by far, the most difficult thing to teach them was troubleshooting. Uh, most folks would come into a problem and they would just stop cold. And they would come to me and say, this doesn't work. You know, well, did you try this? Did you try this? It, you know, and, and they, wanted, they wanted to be led by the hand. Uh, so anything you can do to help uh, students solve their own problems, build their own labs and test stuff is, is wonderful. A, uh, a person that can say, well, I want to study Windows servers and Active Directory that can just on their own set up some virtual machines, network a, a member server and a domain controller together and try stuff. Or if they want to work on attacks, you know, could take Kali and download something like Metasploitable or Darn Vulnerable Web App uh, and work those is just, uh, <clears throat> I mean, their goal. When we had those people like that, we never wanted to let them go. Uh, JR, are there questions? Yeah. Yes, so one quick question on Hoover um, by Angela. Um, she asked, is access to SANS cyber access free? Oh, yes, the, the SAN cyber stuff, everything that I'll go over today is free. Uh, don't have to pay for everything. Any, uh, it's funny, Friday, I came across an article by uh, Krebs, or Krebs on Security, about this very topic. And far and away, what, the, what IT people hiring wanted was people that could do stuff hands on. I don't worry about this column too much where it says uh, demonstrated mastery. Because really, you should, if you're trying to hire an uh, entry level person that has mastery, I mean, you're, you're not doing it right. But people that you are trying to hire should have basic skills. And that's what we need to test. test it. Uh, COVID-19 has thrown a, a real monkey wrench into, into my life, and I'm sure it has all of yours. Uh, I think right now we're going to be half the students meet one day, half the students meet another day in virtual in between and all that. Uh, but then you see the school board meeting and say, well, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll go complete virtual or we'll delay school until October. Just no idea what's going on. 
<laughs> and my wife and I just she who teaches uh, middle school math just went out to get our wheels done. But anyway, um, so I'll talk about some labs that we can use. And Jr., please interrupt me if we get some questions. All right. So this is a Virginia Cyber Range conference. Of course, we want to talk about Virginia Cyber Range. This is the easiest and most accessible of the things that you'll find. Uh, it's got pre-made virtual machines uh, that you can and the kids can connect to them from web browser, from home, from school, whatever. So that would be the first place I'd turn. Uh, you don't have to use pre-canned lessons with these either. If you have your own lesson you want to teach, all you need to do is find one that, uh, <clears throat> find an environment that has the kind of machine you want. Uh, I had to look a little harder to find environments that had two machines so I could have them talking to each other. But I'm sure Tweaks and his gang can help you find the right one. So even if you're not using their classes, the machines work work great. Uh, the main thing you miss there is the students do not build their own lab themselves. Uh, and at some point in their education, they've got to have that. Trying to get the chat up so I can see. Oh, well. So, JR, be sure to interrupt with questions. Um, I've been surprised in my classes that half the kids don't want to use this fancy computer lab that I've set up for them. Uh, get them to their lab station, they'll pull out their laptop, you know, move the keyboard aside, plunk their laptop down, and do it all on their laptop. And that's, that is great. Uh, this, the equipment or the software that you need can be put on their machines. Uh, I use virtual uh, or VMware Workstation Player for virtual machines. But we'll talk about that in a bit. They can download any Linux they want. Windows, you can download Windows evals that are good for, you know, months that you can practice with and make your own labs. So they, again, to get this concept across where they build their own labs and test their own stuff. It's hard to teach them because they all have different problems. I had uh, one student that was taking hours to install, uh, to build a VM. And we finally figured out that their hard drive was uh, linked to uh, Microsoft, I don't know, I drive, whatever the Microsoft drive thing is. <laughs> Everything they were doing was going over the internet. Uh, and then we fixed that and then it turned out still couldn't run anything because they had a, uh, I, I'd never seen it before, but they had a 20 gigabyte hard drive. Um, so these are hard. So JR, any questions? There was a specific uh, question that was uh, ready. Thanks. Say again? There was a specific cyber range question, but um, looks like it was answered. We're good. Okay. Uh, one that I don't see folks around here using very much, but is another real good one. And they're a conference sponsor, so. Uh, AWS Educate. Uh, you can get your own account at AWS Educate, and all you need to do is provide some kind of online documentation that proves that you're a teacher and you have a class. Once you get your class, you can or get your account, you can say, okay, I want to create this a class. Uh, and then they create accounts for all your students with $50 of Amazon credit. Um, I think you can get more by asking for it, but the basic last year was $50. And if the students are careful, reasonable with their stuff that should last at least a semester so there 
They can create their own virtual lab environments. They can have multiple machines network together. They can learn cloud basics. Uh, AWS Educate platform does have things where you can go in and see what they're doing. Uh, so it's really powerful. So it's kind of like a super advanced uh, Virginia cyber. Room. Although, at least for me, it was kind of scary the first, the first parts of getting into it because there are hundreds of different services available on AWS and it did take a little practice. Uh, computer labs, this is what I've been doing. Having a dedicated lab is, is the best. I, I don't know how many of you have that opportunity. Uh, actually, what I did was get Blue Ridge to donate used computers to the governor's school and we set up our own lab. Uh, however, if you've got a lab that is um, in common use across the school, you know, shared, if you can get the IT people to install VMware Workstation or some other hypervisor, then you can do the majority of this stuff right in that lab. Uh, disadvantage, kids can't take it home with them. Uh, the IT people may be nervous because they want to block everything that the kids can do except what's allowed. And with the virtual machines, that's a lot harder for them to block. Um, this didn't help much for the network labs, but we'll get into that in a bit. Okay, uh, just wanted to give you a warning. I've written a whole bunch of modules, but I'm the only one that's ever taught them. And I don't know if uh, I'm, if there's things in there that I, make perfect sense to me that would be utterly confusing to somebody else trying to teach it. So, and then the other thing, I'll teach a class one month, turn around a month later and nothing works because things change so fast. Uh, I like to use current software uh, to protect itself against this Virginia cyber range, at least I used to, would uh, disable updating on, on many of the environments so, so that things wouldn't change out from under your feet. Uh, <clears throat> but anyway, uh, if you use my modules, I'll be glad to work with you and answer questions or rewrite them or, or whatever. Uh, I put them out there so people will use them. So, there was um, a quick question. Yeah. Um, ben Crenshaw asked, how would you begin to teach a high school cybersecurity year long course from very basics up to ethical hacking and forensics? Um, I, well, I, my class takes, takes a year uh, with these modules, although we also have a very strong uh, capture the flag component. My uh, classes spend a couple of weeks, uh, I don't know, three, at least three weeks practicing uh, for U.S. Uh, Cyber Patriots competition, which the kids really like. Uh, and second semester or spring semester, we've started uh, competing in the National Cyber Lab because uh, they just opened that up to high schools. Uh, but you can look through the modules I've got and add your own stuff. Uh, my ethical hacking, I've got some uh, web, uh, web vulnerability demonstrations and some uh, SQL injection, uh, but not too much more. I have a fairly substantial module on crypto. Uh, I haven't done any forensics yet, but the stuff you've listed will easily, if you start getting into it, will easily fill up a year. All right, so Linux modules. Um, CyberAces came out in 250. 2015 and then wasn't updated and drove me crazy. Although finally uh, this summer they updated all their lessons and it was, you know, jump for joy. It was great. Uh, but because of that, some of my modules have drifted away from the cyber racist stuff. Uh, 
a big one is in how uh, Linux computers boot and control their applications. Um, <clears throat> the older method was called System 5, uses script, init.d scripts and RC scripts. Uh, they've moved to something now called System D, which is probably better, but a little more complicated. Uh, also, they use CentOS. I like, and I like CentOS, but Cyber Patriots uses Ubuntu. So I've had, I changed a lot of modules so that they work in Ubuntu. I've tried to make them, what I have now, uh, either modules for both cyber races or corporate, incorporate them so that they'll work together. I mean, both CentOS and uh, Ubuntu. I also found uh, this book, uh, <clears throat> the Linux command line, and I really like it. And one thing that's cool about it is it's available for free, or you can download a PDF of it for free. Uh, let's see. So, back here to my modules. So in Linux, this is a pretty good basic course, although you can find good Linux courses most, most anywhere. But this is my version of labs and extra stuff to go along with the cyber races. Uh, this module on commands comes out of the book I just showed you. Uh, my apps and services are a little more complicated than cyber races now. And I've spent a fair amount of time with exercises to help them use the Linux command line to parse text using uh, grep and regular expressions, uh, <clears throat> piping commands together to cut out columns that you want, things like that. Uh, this finding stuff is kind of aimed at cyber patriots. What they one of the things they do is uh, they put in backdoors and malware on your images and you're supposed to find it. And so this gives some tools for trying to find the malware. The other thing Cyber Patriots does is they, uh, they have a, a list of uh, <clears throat> security settings, secret. And you're supposed to go through and, and harden the image they give you. And you get points if you happen to hit on one that's on their secret list. Uh, a little bit frustrating, but uh, the kids really like Cyber Patriots. Okay, so. We'll talk about that. Okay, the networking modules generally follow cyber races, although I've ex expanded, expanded it a little bit. Uh, Cisco Packet Tracer is a really good way to simulate networks. Of course, it's proprietary to Cisco, but if you learn Cisco, you could probably use the other brands. Uh, it used to be that you couldn't get Packet Tracer unless you were a Cisco Network Academy. Uh, I used to get it because they also bundled it as part of Cyber Patriots. Uh, however, now it's available for free. Uh, if you go, if you search download C Cisco Packet Tracer, uh, <clears throat> you'll find two or three places that aren't Cisco that'll let you download it. If you go to this link here, uh, you, there's a little course for how to use Packet Tracer, and as part of that, they let you download Packet Tracer. So that's really handy, and it's the way I recommend. I'm not sure if those ones on the uh, on the web are, uh, you know, if they put them out, somebody's put malware in them or not. Uh, <clears throat> so my labs originally were hardware labs. 
and I've uh, added Cisco packet tracer modules into many of them. The, uh, I still love I still love the hardware part. I learn a lot better when I'm using real equipment, and plugging real cables and the real things. Uh, plus, the kids love it. <clears throat> so we have a lab where uh, we've got what, about four switches and three routers hooked together, and they've got cables all over the lab. And they'll invite their friends up to see all their fancy, all the fancy work they've done. So that, that's really fun. Uh, the problem is getting the hardware. Uh, for a 12 to 15 person lab, which is what I have, you can probably do it for four or $500 if you can get that out of your school. I, I know that's a lot, but the, the switches, you know, it's nice to have enterprise level switches that can do VLANs and management and SSH and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but you can get the basic stuff done with just a plain old Netgear switch from uh, you know, Walmart or someplace like that. Uh, <clears throat> the routers are a little bit harder. Mine are built on Cisco. Uh, my labs are built for Cisco routers. I like the 2911 because it has uh, three Ethernet ports. And in my lab with the three routers, two of them need three Ethernet ports. Uh, you can also use 20, the 2800 series. Those have been out of service for a while, so you can buy them cheaply. Uh, like re if you can get on eBay, I don't know if your college, if your school will let you buy from eBay, but you can find people that uh, sell remanufactured or just used network equipment. And so far, that's what I've used, and I haven't had much of a break. Uh, questions, Chair? There was no other questions, but um, there was an additional question with what was Ben um, asking before. Um, he was asking, would you do CompTIA A plus ish and network plus material to begin with for it, for a basic cybersecurity course? Um, well, I don't know. I was kind of dumb, I guess. I just went and, and wrote my own. The uh, TIA stuff, I guess is all right. Um, I, ha I haven't studied it. Most of the education I've had in the last 15 years or so has been through SANS, uh, which is a lot more advanced than that. But I, you know, any lesson that you can get that has the kids doing hands-on stuff, I, I, it's got to be good. Okay, the scripting modules. Um, the Bash is more is more like a Linux two, you know, a second Linux class. Uh, the PowerShell is really good. <clears throat> PowerShell is the scripting language that comes bundled now with Windows, I don't know, Windows eight and up, and Server two thousand thirteen and up, something like that. Uh, Anybody that's managing Windows needs to understand PowerShell. Any anybody that's defending Windows needs to understand PowerShell. Because since it's built in, the attackers use it. And a lot of malware now is written in PowerShell. Um, let's see. In the PHP stuff, the PHP was uh, in the 2015 version of Cyber Aces, but was left out for this most current one. Uh, so I copied the old modules, put them in here, um, and <clears throat> mainly because I have labs in some common uh, web vulnerabilities local file inclusion uh, and cross-site scripting mostly. So I kept the PHP in and I just go through enough to get PHP running on the kids' virtual machines and so they can understand how to use it. I skip 
the operators and flow control. I'm not trying to teach them to code PHP. Uh, another fun lab here, well, two fun labs. Uh, the SQL injection lab was taken from something written by a guy uh, named Mad Irish, and it walks you through a, a SQL injection attack on a, on a pretty nice looking website, uh, <clears throat> all the way to get, you know, breaking into the website stealing pass, password hashes, cracking the hashes, and by the end of it, you've got root on the target machine. So it's really fun. Uh, it uses uh, SQL map uh, to do, so it does, it does an automated attack. Uh, another fun lab, Holiday Hack Trail. Uh, I'll talk more about uh, Holiday Hack later. But, uh, let's see. Uh, this may look similar to some of you guys, I hope, you know, if you've been around long enough to play games, computer games for a while. Um, this is a version of Oregon Trail. And what he's done is it E, uh, easy, hard, and easy, medium, hard, each have different hacks where you can uh, uh, break the game. For example, and the easy one is easy. Uh, you just say, I've gone 8,000 miles. You know, you're, you're putting something into the get URL. And let's see, I should have won. I have to go back and figure out why I didn't know. Um, go back and read my lesson. Uh, that one's a lot of fun. PowerShell has a fun lab as well. Um, that's. That's also from the Holiday Hack Challenge. And that one uses uh, one of their, what they call terminals, uh, Christmas Cheer Laser. And it just takes you through searching a, a, a virtual machine to find information that allows you eventually to turn on this Christmas, Christmas Cheer Laser. Each one of them is a, is a different PowerShell concept. This is just a wonderful lab and you've all gone to sleep. I don't know which one it is. Okay, crypto, these are modules that I wrote myself. Uh, I used to be really intimidated by the math that uh, goes with crypto uh, until I came across this book. Where, you know, the math when I was in school was called abstract algebra. You know, I, I enjoyed calculus, but I never got abstract algebra. So I found this book and he explained that the mathematical foundations in a way that I can understand and I really love it. And he also has videos uh, where he goes through every chapter in the book with his class in Germany. And they're, they are really good. Um, let's see. So I have modules here with homework uh, and sort of assessments. My assessments are, aren't the best. They tend to be uh, write down something that proves to me that you did this lab. Uh, for you guys with formal uh, education degrees that can help me write uh, better assessments, I, I would love that if you would help out. But, Start, this goes through modular arithmetic, um, ciphers, which is unfortunately most of what your average capture the flag contest calls uh, crypto. Really, they're just teaching doing ciphers. Symmetric encryption, 
public key encryption with RSA, with Diffie-Hellman, with elliptic curves, uh, hash algorithms, how digital certificates work, and I thought I'd fix these so that they're in the right order. And then finally at the end, how all the suite of uh, protocols works that makes HTTP uh, and TLS work. So <clears throat> I like those labs. There's one set, this is uh, in work where I've tried to rewrite some of the lab, labs to do even less math. But, yeah. I've spent a lot of time on those. Hopefully you'd like them. A uh, couple miscellaneous things. Uh, there's a CTF that I absolutely love. It starts usually about second or third week in December and runs into the middle of January. And it's called the Hel Holiday Hack Challenge. And it is made for IT sec professionals, mostly aimed towards the penetration people, penetration testers, but uh, they, try, they try to branch out so that defenders, blue teams included. Uh, they start really basic. Let's say two of these challenges from last year I've incorporated in, into my modules that I showed you. Um, they've been doing this for years. Um, they keep them open, like the last five years, the ranges are still open. So you can find those. And there was a, let's see, a link I forgot to put on there. This H2 matrix. Is a spreadsheet of the last five years of holiday hack challenges and it shows you uh, What specially each challenge came came out of and these These are in chronological order right now in Chronological order and they'll show you, you know, the General field what we, what they were using, what the main tools were. So if you, you know, I want to look uh, on for, I, I'm not, I need a challenge on JSON. You know. Well, there, there's one right there. Analyzing HTTP2, which is a lot different than the HTTP that you've been used to seeing in your browser. Uh, debugging, uh, <clears throat> Splunk. They even had some challenges on machine learning this year. Uh, so I highly recommend it for, like, for your own personal growth, if nothing else, uh, to give that a shot. Although, well, my wife has gotten used to me locking myself in the room for all of Christmas with my laptop, kind of ignoring everybody else. And let's see. Oh, I forgot crypto hack. If you want to see cryptology, challenges that are real world crypto that are based on things like AES or RSA or Diffie Hellman. Crypto hack is a really good place to go. The challenges start out fairly basic, which is good, and they go all they range all the way up to really, really hard. Uh, I think if you can get 8600 possible points on this. I've gotten about 2,000, you know, after two or three weeks of work. So, like I say, they do get really hard, but the beginning ones are really fun. And they have a Discord group where you can ask questions and do all kinds of stuff like that. We so, had a quick question. Yeah. Uh, Mr. John. Um, Tamara asked, can you go back and do past challenges? I think she was referring to the holiday hack challenges. Yes. Um, Yes, you can. And let's see. The other thing with the past challenges is you can, if you Google, oops, if you Google the challenge, um, you can find walkthroughs for all for all the past challenges, and most of them are really good. Um, let's see, past challenges. So they go back to <laughs> long way. The uh, the last ones that I have write-ups for start here. 
But, you know, even for the older ones, you click on winning entries. Now, here's the, well, here's who won. And then you can download, let's see, let's create. this guy Vlad wins every time. He's, they made a special category for him now where you, uh, where he doesn't actively compete and, and there's an, a, <clears throat> you know, who came the closest to doing what Vlad does. But anyway, the write-up, the write-ups for all these things were there. And I say they're really fun. If you, uh, yeah, you got questions about them, you can ask me or uh, we can find somebody on Twitter that can answer your questions if I can't. Uh, but that's most of what I have to offer. I've just tried to give you lots of modules and lots of links. Uh, say the, the guys at uh, crypto.org this morning have a lot of really good stuff too. So you, you'll have time before school starts to dig through some of this stuff and see what you can use. Uh, again, if you find anything in mind that doesn't make sense or you'd like help with, just get a hold of me and I'll be glad to help you out.